So our first algebraic technique has a name and it's called substitution. Now this is something we've been doing before so the name implies that we're going to be plugging things in for x and y. However, we're just not going to be plugging any random numbers like we did for graphing. There's actually a method to the madness. So here's the game plan. Let me talk about it over here and then we'll see it in action with this system of equation. So the first thing we need to do when we're going to solve a system by using the substitution method is we need to make a decision. We have to solve for a variable in one of the equations. Now at this stage you have four choices because I have two equations and I have two unknowns. So do we want to solve for x? Do we want to solve for y? Do we want to solve for this x? Or do we want to solve for this y? Um, sometimes there's no easy choice. Sometimes there's an obvious choice. So it just takes practice to figure out what we want to do. So that's the first step. So how about we see that in action? So when I look at this, right, that variable right there, taking the second equation and solving for x, that is probably the easiest thing to do to solve 4x because I can just take this equation and the way I would solve it for x is just by adding 4y to both sides. So that's a real easy thing to do. So I encourage you, if you see something easy, go for it. Uh, because you can imagine, if I solve for x here, I'm going to eventually have to divide by 2. I'm going to have to eventually divide by 3 to solve for y. And right here, I have to eventually divide by negative 4. All doable. We know how to handle fractions. But if I can avoid them, let's do it. So in this case, solving, taking the second equation and solving for x is a pretty good choice. So now that we've done that, step two. We're now going to take what I have, and we're going to substitute the result into the other equation. So again, I'm claiming that x is equal to 4 minus 4y minus 8. So I'm going to take what I know x to be and I'm going to come to the other equation, right? Right there. And I'm going to come to this equation. Don't use the same equation you used. Go to the other one and I'm going to replace that x. Let me use my red pen. I'm going to replace that x with what I know x to be from the other equation. So when I make that substitution, it will look like this. And if you guys remember solving um, some word problems in the past, that hopefully looks very similar because that's exactly what we did. We technically used a substitution. So we just finished step two. So we took one of my, so step one, take one of my equations and solve for the variable. Step two, take that result and substitute it into the other equation. Hence the name substitution. Step three, well, what I should be able to do now, notice that at this time, I have one equation with one variable in it. We know how to solve those. Uh, we solve them by simplifying both sides as much as possible. So I will basically distribute first and then I will combine some like terms, 8y and 3y. Well that's 11y minus 16. And so uh, we'll add 16 to both sides next and get 11y equals, what is that going to be, 31. And then we divide both sides by 11. So we can see why we were having such a hard time. Uh, this system is the one I introduced you guys graphically. The y coordinate is a, is a really crazy number, 31 over 11, which is roughly, I think, like 2 and I think that's 22, 8, and 9 elevenths. So that is a pretty crazy y-coordinate that we were having trouble seeing when we were solving this. So there's step three. Now what we have to do, remember, we're finding an ordered pair. There's an x and a y. So what you want to do next is go back and find the other variable. So now that I know what y is, I can go up to here and I can replace that y. Oops, that's a 31, right, with what I know it to be. y is 31 over 11. And now all I have to do is solve for the remaining variable. Uh, so this is crazy. I think uh, 4 times, let's see, 31 times 4, that's 124 over 11 minus 8. It's a common denominator of 11, so I need to multiply that by 11. And 124 of 11, I think that's 88 over 11. And if I subtract 88 from 124, borrow... And we 
we get 6, all right, borrow, and we get 3. All right, so we get x equals 36 over 11, which I think is, what, 3, 33, and 3 elevenths. So our ordered pair, right, that solves this equation is basically uh, 36 over 11, comma, 31 over 11, or in mixed number form, right, this would be 3 and 3 elevenths, comma, 2 and 9 elevenths. And so there is the solution to that system. And let me go back to that last graph, right, here's what the graph looked like back then when we graphed this system, and we can kind of see that we are right, right? Um, we're obviously way off in terms of these values. We are guesstimating, but now I know right, the x coordinate is 3 and 3 elevenths, and the y coordinate is 2 and 9 elevenths. So we now have an accurate answer to the ordered pair that we can see as our solution. And that's basically how we solve by substitution. So again, the rhythm is find an equation and solve for one of the variables. Substitute that result into the other equation, solve the remaining equation, go back and find the value of the other variable, and then we can actually, step five is to check our solution. I'm going to focus on the uh, actual process itself, but to check if this works, right, I'll plug the x and the y coordinate here and get 15, or I'll plug the x and y here and get negative 8. So I'm not going to really show a lot of the checking. I'll let you guys do that. And of course, you guys are looking at an answer in the back of the book. But that's how we would check it. What's important is those first four steps. So let's practice them.